What do you see? More than a million pixels on screen, most of them various shades of orange and brown, and yet in a moment, your brain can put together a cohesive picture of the information that it needs. A million dollars worth of technology, every computer vision machine learning trick ever invented cannot as reliably, as quickly, and as efficiently get to the same conclusion, put together the same picture, and yet your brain can take these millions of individual pieces of information, build the individual patterns, put them together into a cohesive model about the world around you and say to you in no uncertain terms, danger, run. This is what our brains do. They take collections of individual facts and they build around them a way of understanding the world. I'm a data scientist, and that's kind of a fancy buzzword term for someone who uses computer tricks to try to replicate some of the same things. I take a collection of individual facts or data, and I try to build from them a way of understanding the world, a way of creating knowledge from those facts. And systematically doing so is referred to as data analysis. And today, this is how we communicate with the world. This, the buzzword de vive around this particular object, is a dashboard. Now, while the individual data visualizations haven't really changed in the past 75 years, even though the artistic quality has markedly improved, the way that we communicate is still this same approach. This is seen not only as the pinnacle of the way to communicate the knowledge that we've learned from data, from this collection of facts, it's also seen as its terminus. This is how we know we're done. This is how we are trying to get to. This is the thing that we're trying to accomplish. Once we're here, we've done our job. We've answered the question. I don't want to just answer individual questions anymore. I want data science and data analysis to be able to build explorable worlds that take advantage of our humanity. The build to work within the capability of humanity to explore and to collaborate and to engage humanity in its best way. And the way that this works is through data applications. A data application is anything but static. It allows a person to walk around in a world, to see something maybe new, to pick something up, to understand something from a different perspective, to see something new in a completely familiar light, or to see something familiar in a completely different light, to investigate something you didn't even know that you wanted to understand to be able to interact and to collaborate, to contribute your wisdom, your capability, to contribute your humanity into data science, into your ability to understand the world around you. I think it's appropriate that we refer to these as dashboards. Because as dashboards, they're like the dashboard in your car. You glance at it from time to time to answer a specific question. But how fast am I going? Uh, do I have enough gas? Is the engine running at the appropriate speed? Are, are the oil and the uh, water both still there? But they aren't the purpose of the car. The purpose of the car is to go somewhere. The purpose of the car, you, you don't drive a car with your eyes affixed on the dashboard. You drive your car with your eyes out the windshield, exploring the world around you. I don't want to build a better dashboard. I want to build a windshield. And I want to begin with what is possibly the central grand challenge of humanity, medical research. So medical research has largely unchanged over the past several decades. Uh, an experiment is designed, data is collected, it's processed, it's analyzed, it's written into an article, it's published in a journal. Someone else can read that article and understand what's in that journal. And yet, if you start to tear those pieces apart, what we are talking about is a given journal is a collection of individual facts that are ripe to be explored. 
This particular gene is associated with this protein. This other protein, when it is in abundance, causes a reduction in this particular syndrome and the associated metadata around it. This particular experiment was done on 100 subjects. All of them were mice. This other experiment was done on 12 subjects. They were human. It's been replicated three times. That is an incredibly rich data set that needs to be capable of explored. And it would be easy, very easy, to look at some of these, uh, uh, to, 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 to look at this type of data, to summarize it in something like a dashboard, answer a few basic, simple questions. But to do so would belie what could be possible if a researcher could truly explore the overarching world that was created. We took an incredibly tiny sliver of medical research and built a data application around it, specific to only a few hundred articles restricted within neurophysiological research around post-traumatic stress. A stack of research maybe yay high, if you were to print it out, which we didn't. But no researcher remotely has time to read all of that, much less be able to understand it and explore it. And yet, we started with data visualizations and made an explorable world where one person may want to know what is directly connected and what is directly found. Someone else may want to know what is indirectly connected through pathways of unrelated or seemingly unrelated concepts. While one person may be interested in understanding the species at which an individual research topic was conducted, someone else may actually be interested in establishing the replicability to understand causality. The point was not that an application was capable of answering those questions, it's that it didn't know those were going to be the questions asked. It simply allowed exploration and allowed the person that was using it to go and pick up a piece of data and look at it through the lens of their domain familiarity. It allowed somebody to answer questions whether or not they even knew what they really wanted to do, specific purpose or no. Hairbrained schemes, passing ideas, they all, pet theories, even could have the same capability that only years ago would have required hours, hundreds and thousands of hours of relentless focus. And now these things can be asked easily and vividly only because we were able to trigger humanity's capability and want for exploration. And data applications aren't only about exploration, they are also about another very powerful aspect of humanity, which is collaboration. And for inspiration around the capability of engaging humanity's collaboration, I want to turn to probably the most successful, the most famous collaborative data application in history, Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia as a data visualization is incredibly easy to understand. It's just text you read like a book. But as a data application, its capability was around facilitating effective collaboration. The underlying technology just allows multiple people to create and edit documents. That's all it does. And yet, perhaps it's fitting that the first thing we did with it was create one giant document to collect and organize the entirety of central human knowledge. Now, Wikipedia on its own is impressive enough, and there are these fantastic visualizations that have been put together how if Wikipedia were printed out like a standard encyclopedia into volumes, it would be the size of a small motel, but I don't want to, I want to put Wikipedia in its entirety to the side for just a moment, and I want to concentrate entirely on one tiny corner the part of Wikipedia related to Star Trek. <laughs> now, I'm going to deviate for just a moment. I want to tell you about the first edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica. When the Encyclopedia Britannica was first put together, it took years of editing and writing to bring together a number of sources from science, history, and literature together into what they referred to as a dictionary of all human knowledge. The first edition, when it was published, was just shy of 2,400 pages. The part of Wikipedia currently related only to Star Trek is approximately 12% larger. 
I, I can feel you. I can feel you, I promise, saying to yourself how depressing that is. What a waste of our potential, of our attention, of our capability. But I am not going to let this story off the hook that easily. We built a collaboration capability. We built an ability to cognitively collaborate and organize knowledge that was so efficient and effective that one of the things we did with it was we cataloged an entire base of human knowledge larger than the entirety of collected human knowledge just a few generations ago about a relatively trivial television show. But we did it together in our spare time, for free. <laughs> that is not depressing, that is inspiring. Now whether or not you are willing to grant me the decisively generous leeway I would need to refer to the Star Trek Wikipedia portal as a grand challenge of humanity, I will unapologetically label as such the ability to cognitively collaborate in such an efficient and effective manner that it could exist. Our brains centrally are capable of creating knowledge from fact, creating an understanding of the world from data. And as we systematically do this, we will be able to take on challenges, everything from the grand challenges of humanity, all the way down to the daily mundane challenges of modernity. When we can engage the best of humanity with technology, we can solve anything. So, Marty McFly's father was right. When you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. And humanity, when it is engaged, and when it is capable of exploring, when it's capable of collaborating, this is what humanity does best. Humanity, by its nature, is social. We love to work together to solve problems, big and small. Humanity is curious. We love to learn about new things. No matter whether it is cataloging exactly how many red shirts were killed in the original series, 43, or understanding the intricacies of the human mind. Humanity is ambitious in all things. Let's run with that. Thank you.